Hello crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I'm going to show you how to stitch with this new stitch die from Spellbinders. This one is called the Stitched Starry Argyle. And the stars come from the little punch areas, where they're kind of like a little pierce. And then there's going to be a really cool pattern when you stitch on here. So I thought it would be fun to show you at the beginning how to stitch with this, just for anyone who needs a little tutorial. And then we're going to turn this awesome background into a background card for an ornament that is stitched. And I'm using, I'm so excited, can you tell? I'm using the stitched Christmas tree, which is also new from Spellbinders. So if you're interested in seeing the ornament, stick around to the end. And let's just jump right into the actual stitching on the card. So this is a beautiful background die. I've gone ahead and used my platinum to die cut out this stitched die. And there's several holes that are on here and I'm going to use all of them to make this beautiful pattern. So I stitched on this in the past. I think I've done this maybe seven or eight times, I'd like to say, and I learned a few tips and tricks. Oops, I forgot to take my tape off. So the first tip is pick a pick a thread that you have enough thread to work with this die definitely uses a lot more embroidery floss or thread than a typical die because it has these long stitched areas so the the stitching is going to go about I don't know what in inches but if I had to estimate it would be more than the average stitching die so make sure to pick a color that you have enough thread in before you start. And I like to use two different colors. So the first color is going to be closer to the background. So your second color is going to be on top of that second color, on top of the first color. So whatever you want your more prominent color to be, have that be your second stitched color. The more prominent one, do second the less prominent one, do first. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this gold color. I'm using two different DMC flosses today. I'm using 783 and then 498. And this one makes my heart happy when I look at it because that's my grandma's handwriting and it was just her, it would have been her birthday. Let's see, today is the, eighth when I'm filming this so her birthday would have been six days ago but anyway so anytime I use any of my grandma's materials I get really happy because I know that she would just love seeing my arts and crafts so to go ahead and start with this I always tape my tail I shouldn't say always but I've more recently been just taping my tail because it's easy and quick so I use a little double-sided tape taped my tail on the back it's nice and secure ready for me I'm just gonna grab a needle and I'm gonna start off now this panel has three different sections so there's one here one here and one here so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this first panel which is this area and then I will move on as I go but I'm gonna do my whole card first with the gold and then with the red so to do the first panel i'm going to take my needle and go to the very outside hole on the bottom right not this one right here the very far hole and you'll see that this whole column right here has two holes going up right here so for this first section, I'm going to always go on the farthest hole over here. And I'm going to take this first thread and go to my now second row or second column of holes. Now this column over here has three holes in the set. But if we are just looking at the I'm going to grab some paper to cover up the other ones. If we're looking at this column as 
this row and this row, this first area, as this row and this row, you just to stitch from right side to right side. So what I'm gonna do, just so you can maybe see it a little better, is I'm gonna tape this white paper to my green paper with some craft tape. And I think that would help anyone who's trying to figure this out for the first time. It, it is a little more complicated of a die because you have to kind of pay attention to the holes that you're using, but it's not impossible. Okay, so like you can see here, I have that panel. So I'm on the right side over here. I'm going to go over and up two, and then I'm gonna go in that right hole right there. Just like that. Now my string is on the back, and I'm going to go over and up two. So I'm gonna go up into this second hole here, right here, and then pull it like that. And I'm gonna go over, up two. So I'm gonna go in that right side again. Always on the right side for this part. And then I'm gonna go over, up two. And I'm now back to that top side. Now I'm back to the right side here. And I'm just gonna go back down now. So I'm gonna go over, down two. I'm gonna go in that same hole that I've been using. So I'm just doing the one zigzag first. Then I'm gonna go over, down two. So I'm gonna come up this one. Go over, down two, right into that. And that makes my zigzag. Then I'm going to go and next I'm going to go over, down two, but now I'm not gonna come up this side because that zigzag's already done. I'm gonna now go into the next hole, which is now going to be the left side of this column. And it's gonna be the left side of this column. So I'm gonna go in that big hole there, right about there, and it should line up with that first zigzag. We should have a little track here going. So again, over, up two, that would put me right here. Over, up two, that would put me here. See how it's starting to make the track? Over, up two. I'm at the top now. I'm just gonna pull it tight since it seems to get, things are a little loose here. There we go. Over, down two. Over, down two. Over one, down two. Should have been saying one before. And there's my zigzag. So you can see the track there. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this column, this first right side column, but I'm going to go the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna use the left side columns over here. I'm gonna go outside in. So up this big hole on the bottom, I'm gonna go over two, up two, or over, go over and up, and it should cross over. Then I'm going to go, sorry, I bumped the camera, over and up two. And I'm gonna stay on that left side. Over and up two. Over and up two. And then I'm gonna come back down and make some X's here. Go down two and over, down two and over. Down two and over. Oh, see how I made a mistake there. 
I went on the right side here, so I'm gonna go back and put it on the right side. So I'm still making that first zigzag. Anyway, down two and over, back to that same hole. And now I've made my first set of my left side zigzags. Then I'm gonna go back down to the bottom and make my next set going up. So over and up. Over and up. Over and up. Over and up. Now I'm at the top, I'm gonna to go back down. Hopefully I have enough thread to get back to the bottom. I think we'll maybe be lucky if we can do that. Anyway, <laughs> go down two and over. Ooh, this is making those X's, isn't that pretty? Down two and over. Down two and over. Ha, huh, I did it, I made my string work. Now. I am done with this gold thread for the first side. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape off my tail. This is not long enough to really work with my next area. To tape it off, I'm just using craft tape. I'm just using that double-sided tape again. I'm giving it a little snip. So there's that first panel. Now I will try the red, which will show you how I go back the other way. And then hopefully by that point, you'll have an idea of kind of how it goes. And then I will finish the rest of the card if you need to keep watching. If you need to keep watching the stitching, please don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It, it is a little more complicated than an average die. But if you're interested in seeing the ornament, you can always go ahead and skip to that part. But for those of you who either like hanging out with me or just want to um, see the, the stitching one more time or see this red area now, because this is a little different than the gold, you can go ahead and stick around. All right, the red follows a different path because it has these little holes in the center so now the red has this other column. So I like to start on the very bottom, again on the right. I don't know why, but I just do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the bottom right hole. So there's one, a left hole and a right hole. So I'm gonna now go over to this right hole. Like that. And now I'm going to go up to this hole, way up here. So I'm gonna go up to and over. It looks a little weird as you're going, but trust the process. <laughs> over and up to this one now, staying on the right side. Over and up to, but on the right. The reason why I'm putting my needle in the front is so I can point, but I have to remember that my thread, if it's on the back, it's got to go on the back. There we go. And now I'm going to finish this first set, this first area, by going to this hole on the right. Like that. Then I'm going to go back down to the hole that I just came from, right there and then follow my string back down. And this is the part where it's really tempting to go on that left side, but just stay on the same ones as before and make a zigzag line. And if I did this correctly, it should be one solid line, which phew, did that. Okay, then I'm gonna take my thread and go back down to that middle area and then I'm gonna make the red track. So I'm gonna to go to the left side now of the holes and then go up to this one. Just follow those angles of the red line that's already there. I think
think if I had to give this stitching die a level, I'd say this is probably intermediate to advanced, just because it is a lot of zigging and zagging and a lot of crisscrossing. So you kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing, but I still think that it's doable if you try hard, <laughs> if you try to make it work. Okay, now that's my first red track. There's going to be another one. So for the red, because this is the, the second, this is the primary color, it's going to go on top and it uses these middle holes on the top and the bottom. So we're going to go on those two times. So now I'm going to go up that first hole that I went in again. And now I'm going to go on this side over here. Stay on the right since that's the first hole I went up. And go over here. And make my opposite red zigzag. And just follow that all the way up to the top. Right up to there. And then I can take my string and go back down and get a third red line. And I think my thread is going to run out, so I'm going to have to grab a little bit more and finish off my first panel here. Just quickly tape it. Now that I have my next thread, I'm going to go ahead and finish my second red zigzag, which would be my fourth red line going in the left side now and just following my other red all the way up. Just filling in the rest of the holes that have not been used and then meeting at the top and zigging my way back down. I definitely recommend this whole white paper on the side if the whole thing is a bit overwhelming. I think it would help a lot. There you have it. There's that first side. Look how cool that is with the Argyle design. This is a perfect one to pair with ornaments because just alone the background could be a gorgeous card. You could just have the card be just the background stitching and that could be a whole finished card. You could add a little glimmered sentiment, a stamp sentiment. You could add an ornament like I am. It's kind of all up to you. So now I'm gonna move my panel over and go ahead and finish the rest of this card. I will put a video timestamp on the screen so if you're not interested in watching me finish the stitching you can go ahead and skip to the ornament part. I'm thinking that it would be most helpful to people if I left the rest of the stitching in real time and not speed it up. So I think what I'm going to do is just let it play and probably add a little background music just because it might be <laughs> a bit of a chat because I've already been filming for about 15, 20 minutes and um, I'm not even close to being done with this card. So <laughs> this might be a long one, but it's kind of worth, it's worth it to me if this helps someone figure out how to use this die because it's so cool and I don't want it to intimidate you from not using it because you can do it, I promise, you can do it.
It is so satisfying to finish one of these because it is just so pretty and it it is a lot of detail and it looks like a tremendous amount of work like you spent hours on this. Um, through filming and chatting it looks like I'm at 40 minutes but I think that if I wasn't explaining it as in depth it probably would have taken me about a half an hour I'd say. But I happen to be an experienced stitcher, so I don't know, maybe it would take a little bit longer. But in general, anyone can do this. If you try and focus, you'll be fine. Okay, to add this to my card base, I'm going to use liquid glue. I'm really going to focus on the edges because this die definitely has a little bit of bulk with all of the stitching, especially on the back. And then I'm going to kind of focus on some of the areas that glue can grab, maybe some of these bigger areas. But there's holes all over this panel, so uh, maybe a tape runner would have been a better choice. I don't know. We're going with it. The glue's on. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just going to double check to make sure my card's opening the right way. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I've done that so many times where I've put a card base on it backwards and you know it's fine it really isn't a big deal you can either leave it you can take your paper cutter and just cut off the front area and put it on another card base it's all up to you <laughs> now the color you choose for the very background that's going to poke through some holes really isn't that big of a deal because you barely see it at all <laughs> so I'll just mention that but it definitely shows a little bit especially through the bigger holes now this is my favorite part is making the ornament section so there you have it there's the stitched argyle I guess it's called stitched starry argyle there's another argyle die that spellbinders has so if argyles are your thing check that other die out too but let's make the ornament gorgeous okay so this little stitch tree was part of the Christmas stitching or stitch for Christmas this year it has these dies so I went ahead and used this die and this one to make the tree that's the darker green paper there and then to make the bright green I used this die which is creating the outline for all the loops I went ahead and stitched this if you're interested in how to stitch the tree, I will have a video on my channel coming soon. Let's see. Stitch Christmas tree. Okay, two days. I'm going to have a video of how to stitch this. Um, if you have stitched with Spellbinders dies in the past, you could probably kind of figure it out. Just go out the inside in the centers, and then it has this little tree base, and I used some gold metallic thread on there, and then a beautiful Christmas star at the top. So I want my ornament to have a completed look. So I added these little embellishments to act as ornaments. And then I'm going to put a paper on the back of my tree to cover up all of the stitching because I was thinking that this ornament could be used as like a keepsake thing I'm not sure so kind of like you could write on the back and say like Christmas 2023 or love mom <laughs> or love grandma whoever you are to someone love uncle Tom <laughs> doesn't matter really um just have just have a smooth place to write on it and it also covers up the back of the stitching so this liquid glue is going to be my very good friend here and just help get everything stuck down. But this tree is a really quick to stitch and you could certainly do this with other stitch dies as well and just make your own little ornaments. I think one day it would be so cool to have a whole Christmas tree or maybe like even a mini Christmas tree of all stitching ornaments I think that would be like a dream just a dream but you know we'll see one day okay I'm gonna hit all the big areas and just get that glue on there and then I'm gonna top it off with the star 
last because I want that to be visible, but this little stump can kind of get hidden. Ah, before my glue dries, I totally forgot. You're making an ornament, silly. I gotta put my string in. I have this twine that I, I don't know, I think I got it at Michael's or Crafts Direct, Hobby Lobby, somewhere. A craft store, that's all I know. And this knot is too bulky, so it's getting snipped. And I just made a loop, basically. And I'm just gonna sandwich that behind my Christmas tree and pinch really well so it gets stuck in there. Like that. And then I get to put the star on and that and then the ornament is complete. And I'll show you how I put it on my card so it acts as a decoration but also a removable ornament. So you can give this to someone and then they can take the ornament off of the card and put it on a Christmas tree. I know, crazy, isn't it? Okay, I really like that this is feeling really secure in there, which is a good sign. This is not gonna fall apart. And that is definitely a smooth surface for writing. So, so far, so good here. <laughs> okay, now this is kind of the fun part, adding it to the card, kind of giving it a little finishing touch. I have some washi tape here, and I'm looking for some Christmas ones. I think I have that one. Maybe this one. We'll do both. Why not? It's Christmas. And what we're going to do is kind of center it on the card how I want it and get my washi tape ready. Maybe we'll do like a little, a double one because both of these washi tapes are so cute. I'm pretty sure that the washi tapes here came with my teacher planner. I know, I'm a little crazy with my teacher planner. At least I used to be <laughs> a couple years ago and I'd have tape and stickers for everything. Anyway, <laughs> I was probably needing card making in my life if I'm looking back at that and reflecting. But okay, I'm gonna hold my tree on and then open up my card like this, holding it. Take this down like that and then just put a little bit of washi tape over the twine. It is that easy. So it kind of swings around. You can go ahead and write in there. Let's see. I would maybe take a pen. Sorry, that was really close to the microphone. Hello. <laughs> and let's see, maybe I'll write, add me to your tree. And then a cute little arrow. That way the person knows you can take it off and ta-da! And then when they take it off, that's still a gorgeous card. So if they're putting this card on display, I know a lot of people display their Christmas cards, they can still do that. Enjoy your sweet message inside. And then you have your beautiful Christmas tree. Should we take it a step further and add a glimmered sentiment? Let's do it. I think we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> the too much brain, I tell ya. Okay, I'm going to use one of Yana's sentiments because stunning. I think we're going to put that. Where should we put it? Should we put it behind the tree like it's a reveal? Oh, let's do that. Okay. So <laughs> this is like the perfect size. Okay. This is the perfect size. I'm going to take some liquid glue again give it a little bit of extra glue here because i need it to really stick on that thread i need my tweezers we're gonna place it just so so hopefully the tree kind of hides it and then it will reveal Ugh. are we gonna be lucky enough to get it i think i need my really amazing tool my pencil this pink pencil has helped me so much. <laughs> wow. 
one single pencil. Okay, the tree is lined up right about there. Okay, so that's that second row. And then we'll just center it with the middle column. Okay, wish me luck, people. Second row, middle column. I felt like I feel like there is probably a better way to do that, but I did it. Let's see if it lines up. Cross our fingers. <laughs> we're gonna pull it down just a little. Awesome. It did not. Okay, we're gonna go up a little bit higher. Okay. Please work. <laughs> okay, now that the tree is secure again. Oh, we have it. Okay, so there it is. Oh, lovely, a beautiful tree. Bam! Glimmer sentiment. <laughs> now you can take it off and you have a lovely Christmas card and a Christmas ornament. It's been a long one, so I hope you've enjoyed. If you're interested in knowing how I stitched this tree, come back in two days. I am going to just go a little bit even more be above and beyond and add a glimmer sentiment to the inside of the card because we're just making this quite the project. I have a whole playlist on my channel that's called Stitching on Cards, so if you're interested in more stitching videos from me, check out that playlist. And I think there's like 50 videos on there at this point, so there's something to inspire you for sure. And then I also run a Facebook group, which is called Spellbinders Maker Group. I have a link for that in the description, and I'm always posting on there about different sales and all sorts of lovely things that usually relate just to Spellbinders because it's called the Spellbinders Maker Group. So it's Spellbinders related content, but there's 6,000 people on there now. Yay. And there's tons of inspiration on there for you. And I know people are going to be loving these stitching dies. So go ahead and join the group and go ahead and share your beautiful creations on there. I want to see what you are making. So please do that. And I hope that you subscribe to my YouTube channel here and, and you can come back. I think I have a video going up every day this week. Tomorrow is a stitch die with Simon's dogs so cool and then like i said two days from now christmas tree so we'll see you next time i hope i hope you get to craft and stitch soon Bye bye